Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we're doing some chemistry and we're going to look at intermolecular forces, specifically ion induced dipole forces. Now last time what we did was ion dipole forces where the positive or negative ion was attracted to the positive or negative pole of a polar molecule. So if it was a negative ion, it was attracted to the positive side of the polar molecule. Now we're going to look at ions and how they might induce a pole in an otherwise non-polar molecule. So let's look at how that works. Well, we've got a, an ion in yellow and let's say that that ion had a positive charge. Now, if this was a polar molecule, this would be the negative end. And so there would be this dipole ion dipole force. Now this is a non-polar molecule, so it doesn't have that automatic spot where the ions can be attracted. So what happens here is we know that this non-polar molecule has electrons. And these electrons are constantly moving. And what's going to happen is this positive ion is going to attract the electrons and so they're going to move towards this side and so we're going to end up with a negative and a positive dipole and so in an otherwise non-polar molecule we have these temporary poles so these forces are not quite as strong as the ion dipole because of this temporary nature, it's creating a pole rather than there being a consistent, constant pole in a polar molecule. So let's look at how this might work. So these, remember, are weaker than our ion dipole forces. And let's say we have in our blood, we know that we have oxygen molecules, O2 going through our blood. And these oxygen molecules we know are non-polar. And you can look at my video, which I'll put a link to on the screen now, on intramolecular forces and covalent bonding. So these are non-polar. <clears throat> and in our blood, we've also got iron, which we know is Fe3 plus. So these are iron ions. Let me just write that down so there's no confusion. They're iron ions. And these have a plus three charge. Um, let's draw one here. And we'll draw one here. And so what's going to happen is we've got electrons in our blood that are constantly flowing and they will then be attracted to this, the part of the molecule where you've got an ion, ion sitting there saying, I'm positive, come and visit. And so we've got this ion induced dipole, which is negative. And then obviously you'll have a positive end as well. So you might have a positive. And so let's draw the iron in yellow so that it's consistent. And so we've got these iron induced dipole force. Pardon the pun, but it's a good way to remember it. Iron induced. So just remember what happens in your bloodstream. You've got O2 running through the blood. We know we need oxygen. We know we need iron, we do not want to be iron deficient. And so you've got this iron dipole, iron induced dipole force between the ions and what is a non-polar molecule, which now has a temporary pole. Okay, so next we're going to be doing van der Waals forces, where we'll start with dipole-dipole interactions. Remember that all of these forces, the, the name kind of says it all. So where we had an iron dipole, there was an iron and a dipole. Now we've got an iron induced dipole, meaning the iron is inducing a dipole and a non-polar molecule. 
It's a bit of a tongue twister, it might sound confusing, but hopefully these diagrams helped you. If they did, please find the subscribe button and click on that and like the video and share it with your friends and all that good stuff. And I will keep the videos coming. So have a great day and I'll see you in the next lesson.